Welcome to Profarm Knowledge. So let us go through mebendazole and albendazole in anthelmintic drugs. Both of them are broad spectrum anthelmintics. They have uh, various differences between them. Mebendazole is uh, somewhat inferior and albendazole is superior when compared with that of the mebendazole. But both of them are having same mechanism of action. Coming to the differences between the mebendazole and the albendazole. Mebendazole must be used in multiple doses, thus that is the disadvantage associated with the mebendazole. Whereas albendazole can be used in single dose or one dose is more than enough to treat uh, many infestations like roundworm infestation, pinworm and hookworm infections. Whereas in case of the mebendazole, multiple doses like uh, 100 mg twice a day for 3 consecutive days is used in many cases and mostly mebendazole is preferred only when the multiple infestations are occurring and it is also useful in the treatment of pinworm, hookworm, whipworm as well as tapeworms. Whereas the albendazole is useful in the treatment of uh, tapeworm, hydatid disease and trichinosis and uh, neurosarcosis. So these are all the uh, infections in which the albendazole can be used. Coming to the mebendazole, mebendazole will show 100% cure in case of pinworm and hookworm whereas only it can cure 75% only in case of tapeworms. And when coming to the larvae, mebendazole cannot kill the larvae that are present inside the tissues whereas albendazole will be also able to act on the larvae that are present inside the tissue. So that is an advantage associated with the albendazole. And coming to tolerability, mebendazole is well tolerated by the patients whereas albendazole is having excellent tolerance. That means albendazole is having less adverse effects compared with that of the mebendazole. Coming to the adverse effects of the mebendazole and albendazole, both of them are having adverse effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pain. Uh, whereas in case of albendazole, if there is any heavy infestation of worms in the intestines, there will be expulsion of the worms like Ascaris lumbricoids from the mouth and the nose. So that is a disgusting uh, disadvantage as associated with that of the mebendazole. So that makes it uh, less advantageous when compared with that of the albendazole. And then you have the allergic reactions, hair loss and granulocytopenia that is coming with the Mebendazole. So these are the adverse effects associated with this drugs. Apart from that, coming to the albendazole, albendazole is uh, mostly used and then uh, we have the pharmacokinetics of the albendazole. Both the drugs are taken orally. Albendazole, uh, one single dose is enough as we have seen here. In case of uh, children, 200 mg is uh, enough. And then in case of adults, it is 400 mg of a single dose taken during night times and mostly preferably with that of a fatty meal, the absorption will be very good. And after that, it enters into the blood circulation and then it undergoes first pass effect and it's giving a metabolite that is called a sulfoxide metabolite. And that metabolite, sulfoxide metabolite of albendazole is also showing anthelmintic activity and that will be also crossing the blood brain barrier. So the advantage associated with albendazole is it is lipophilic in nature. So it crosses the blood brain barrier. It will be able to enter into the brain and it shows the activity activity also inside the brain. So the T half will be something around like 8.5 hours. So these are the uh, advantages associated with that of the albendazole when compared to that of the mebendazole. Now com coming to the mechanism of action. So both of them taken orally. Uh, the drug will be entering like after the absorption it starts acting on the worms and once it comes in contact with the worms it enters into inside of the worms. So now uh, inside of the worm, the drug will be going and binding with to that of the beta tubulin. Actually the drugs albendazole and mebendazole, both of them, they are having high affinity to the beta tubulins. The beta tubulins and alpha tubulins are uh, both present in the microtubules. So during the formation of the microtubules, these two proteins that is beta tubulin and the alpha tubulin they polymerize and they form structures after the polymerization or after the dimerization they actually form the micro 
tubules and we all know like uh, microtubules are uh, responsible for the structure maintenance uh, in the organisms then what is happening is our drug is going and binding to the beta tubulin because it is having high affinity to the beta tubulin that too one thing we have to remember here is uh, the drugs are having uh, affinity to the beta tubulin which is actually present in the worms and they ha they are having less affinity towards the beta tubulin present in the mammals so that makes the drugs selective towards the worms and so it goes and binds to the beta tubulins of the parasite uh, at a particular binding site that is called as colchicin binding site and after binding to the colchicin binding site um, they inhibit the polymerization of the alpha and the beta uh, proteins so alpha tubulin and beta tubulin proteins they cannot polymerize or they cannot undergo this kind of dimerization and once this kind of dimers are not formed uh, then what is happening is new microtubules cannot be formed once new microtubules are not formed the uh, already present microtubules etc will be lost so the loss of intracellular microtubules occurs gradually after once the old microtubules are also lost what is happening is the cytoplasm cytoplasmic uh, microtubules are present these microtubules they are not formed improper functioning of uh, the cell will be there leading to the blockade of the glucose uptake in the parasite like for example here we can see because of the microtubule uh, non-functioning and uh, because of the loss of the intracellular microtubules or the cytoplasmic microtubules glucose intake into the parasite will be stopped what happens is this glut 2 receptors which is responsible for the glucose intake into the organism stops working and the glucose cannot be taken up by the worm from outside to inside of the worm uh, so albenzole and mebenzole binding to the worm beta tubulins will inhibit the microtubule formation and then that will be further inhibiting the glucose uptake into the parasite so that is the mechanism of action after that what happens because the glucose cannot enter into the worm the worm starts using up all the glycogen that is present inside and then the glycogen store will be depleted inside the worm once the glycogen is also over and it will it cannot be taking the glucose from outside and it cannot produce glucose inside also because glycogen is also over then what happens is immobilization and death of the worms that will be leading to the lack of movement and death of the worms and uh, that is also stopping the hatching of the eggs and larvae will be stopped so that is how the mebenzole and albendazole are exerting their antelmentic activity